Hello traders at CMC Markets. This is Trevor Neal of RRG Research. I am presenting to you on the evening of Thursday the 17th and this is for Monday. The Today we're going to look at stick with stock indices, mainly stock indices. We've got big rotation and which uh, got to say that we did see coming. Uh, we saw the deterioration in the RNG charts of the US stock indices, particularly the, the tech stocks. Um, we've been talking about that for several weeks. We saw the bearish divergences on the charts. We'll have a look at that again. Now we're looking at Fibonacci retracements and the uh, where the support levels are below, where this might end, how much of a correction are we likely to have. I would also look at the US treasuries because there's some sort of to some people given the fall in inflation a sort of surprising move there and also the how the market the sector rotation of the cyclical securities versus these staple securities is behaving this is uh, people's reluctance to buy things which are discretionary as opposed to things which they need all the time like food and this is showing up in the market too so behind the stock market correction there is also a sentiment in the economy as well that we can see so that's what we're going to look at today so let's get started with a look from the top at asset classes let us start right from the top. This is looking at asset classes using ETFs in order to, to represent the room. And you can see there's only one in the leading quadrant. That's the Spider S&P ETF in the leading quadrant. In the improving quadrant, we've got the Dow Jones. We've got also the S&P small cap stocks as well, maybe turning up a little bit. Only just moving into the leading quadrant is the uh, emerging market, but everything else, that's bonds, that's gold, that's Europe, is in the lagging quadrant. So US equities is the best place to be in the world at the moment. However, when we look at this weekly sampling of leading uh, world indices, uh, we see that we've got this movement, quite a swift movement down, a deterioration in the NASDAQ, also deterioration in, in the Nikkei, which has been you know, driven by the currency there. The S&P versus the MSCI world, close to it, but uh, blunted here. The Nifty is looking okay. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is in the improving quadrant, but with a short tail here, northeasterly direction, that's good. And then the Russell 2000, also rather blunted. The lagging quadrant, is and this is versus the MSCI world is the DAX, the stocks, the CAC, the FTSE. <laughs> really every everything in Europe is down in here. Yes, US stocks are good versus the world, but they're not heading in a constructive direction, not in a northeasterly direction. And there's a deterioration here, there's a weekly sampling, and we're going to look at this in the charts. We picked this up already a few weeks ago and this deterioration, but let's break it down now and look at uh, some of the individual charts. Now, and the S&P chart, this is the uh, daily chart of the S&P. Now we've seen the deterioration heading south in the RG chart, and look what's happened here on the absolute chart. We have broken this key uh, 4,450 level, broken it hard there. So this is a sign of some sort of significant intermediate term top. The next support, which, which is minor, is at um, 4,385. But the big support comes from this low here at 4,340. This is also a previous high level so that's a significant support level and also it is approximately 4300 is the 38.2 percent uh, retracement of the advance from march to the high uh, of last month so i would say as a chartist the way i teach uh, this is that when you're looking for a retracement i think it is a retracement in a bull market ultimately will continue on up but we're looking at what is likely to be a severe retracement. If you look for the first significant chart support level, and that is that previous high, this recent low, and also the 
So the indication is here that we're heading towards the that 4,300, 4,400 level. The MACD, it warned us, remember we were talking about this, the bearish divergence, high, high, lower, high. So we had a strong feeling that this move had run its course at uh, the beginning of this month. It is now uh, turned down hard on the MACD and the gap is widening here now. We saw the same I think, with the bearish divergence in the RSI into this high here and now we've come down hard and we're pointing down the still strong momentum on the downside. So this has deteriorated a lot this one and looks like it's got quite a bit of room on the downside to come much lower. Now there's a daily chart of the Russell 2000 index. Now you remember from the RG chart it was in the improving quadrant and it was heading in a good tra trajectory when it when this was going on here close to the the high of the beginning of the year but it reversed round and uh, in, still inside the improving quadrant and reverse round warning us of this and this is what has happened now this has deteriorated really awfully it's tumbled from 2000 down to through the support at 1900 you would have expected it to respect that a little bit but it didn't and it's plunged further it's gone through the 38.2 percent retracement of the um, rally from the March low. The next level, and usually if you break uh, one Fibonacci level, we'll go to the next one pretty quickly. That's at 1847. However, really the support of any meaning doesn't come in until we're right down here in the uh, 1800. So we've got two highs in here at 1810. Uh, we've also got this low here at 1819 so 1820 let's, let's call it there so this is the area where significant support really comes in so if it doesn't hold at the 50 percent level 18,050 which is a, a sort of consolidation then I think we're coming down to 1800 or 1820. This is a corrective move I, I, I think we can still say that but it's got a lot of power behind it this is a really precipitous fall. Look at the MSCD here, the gap widening in it, it's gaining momentum on the downside. RSI 2 plunge, plunge, but beware, we haven't seen this kind of reading in the RSI since March when we made the low. Yes, we can come lower and I think we it's likely we will, but beware that this is quite extended on its fall. The fall has been very rapid indeed in this one. Now to the NASDAQ. The Nasdaq 2 has tumbled, we were warned, and it has really come down hard. I, we saw the, the bearish divergence in it. We got high, high all through this until we had this lower high in here from the June high to the July high, the June high to the July high, and this warned us that there was loss of momentum into this top. The sell-off really started when we, the MACD crossed back at, at the end of July, middle of July, third week of July, sorry, the third week of July, and then it uh, has tumbled since then, and now it's got a strong momentum on the downside with the gap widening here. The RSI, as you can imagine, it's the same. We didn't get a bearish divergence in it, but it has come down hard and it is really down to the levels it was at these important lows back in March before its gigantic rise started. So it has broken the first level of support, which was this high from June at 15,200. It's broken that. It's deteriorating quite badly right now. The next support comes in at 14,600. It's not particularly strong. 38.2% retracement is 14,300, and we've got some support here at 14,200, but again, not very strong because this move was so rapid. There was very little trading at these prices. Very few people bought and sold things that have got commitment to those levels because we move swiftly through them. The pullbacks that we had were very small and, and the balls took over very quickly. So we've got a lot of froth in this market. This one is holding up best so far as we see in the RRG. It's still the one furthest to the right in the RRG, but it, uh, it is the most vulnerable to having a substantial uh, back if it gets the bit between its teeth that the whole technology boom is over and um, and we're changing our mood from 
from a very aggressive stance into a very defensive stance. A worry is also the bond market. Here is the uh, US 10 year yield chart, Treasury's yield chart, and although inflation is cooling, um, the uh, government bond uh, yield is increasing. And uh, we're close to the highs we saw in October last year. Uh, I would say that the break of uh, four point four and a quarter percent is quite likely, but given the high level of momentum we've got here on the MACD, gap widening there, and on the RSI, soaring ahead here too. So we've got a lot of momentum here and trouble ahead potentially for the stock market as you have this risk-free, I say that in inverted commas, investment of US government backed treasuries and the cost of that is, is, is going up, the yield is going up. And a final word is uh, looking at the relationship of cyclical stocks, so uh, ones which benefit from a, an aggressive outlook, a positive outlook for the market, and defensive stocks, the stocks that do well, the things that people need to all the time, food and these sort of things, consumer staples is, a, is the main sector for this, and that people will always eat even if uh, they haven't got much money, but other things like discretionary spending they will cut back on, on. so these are tend to be quite cyclical with the economy. Um, the uh, yellow line on here is the USA cyclicals versus divided by defensives. So when it's going up, the cyclicals, the things which we um, don't have to buy, but we choose to buy, the luxury goods and things like that. Eating out, for example, as, a, as opposed to eating at is going up. But in the US, it's just turned down here. So I wouldn't say it's a very strong definitive end of uh, things forever but it has turned down um, in recent weeks in line with the stock market uh, people have become much more defensive in their spending so this is uh, not just a stock market related correction it's uh, due, due to the sort of attitude of people and how they feel about the economy. This is also the case in Europe as well the white line here is the case for Europe cyclicals divided by defensives have been going up strongly topping out I'm not saying it's the end we've had moves like this uh, before but it is at this moment the the move in the indices, so the tradable indices, is reflected in the behaviour of people and their views of the economy. I'll leave it there for this week. Um, it's uh, interesting, we've seen that follow through, we picked up the loss of momentum in RRG uh, three week, three four weeks ago, we saw those bearish divergences in the stock indices themselves, warning us that the highs that were uh, made um, a few, only a few weeks ago um, were on low momentum and fragile. The markets have, have turned down in the US stock indices. Uh, only the, uh, the NASDAQ is furthest to the right, but it's in the weakening quadrant and moving swiftly uh, through that. Only the S&P remains in the leading quadrant and that is moving south, so losing momentum. Uh, the Russell uh, looked as though it was getting better but has, has turned down quite sharply and um, the chart looks terrible and uh, and the all of the European stock indices are in the uh, weakening uh, quadrant particularly uh, the FTSE which looks dire. So that's the background we've got. We've also got those structural problems with interest rates and also you can see with the cyclicals how they're changing in their relationship showing that that people are really heading for spending money only on the things that they need like consumer staples. I wish you a great week. Thank you very much indeed for listening. This is me, Trevor Neal. Uh, wish you all the best for the week. May the trend be with you. Goodbye.